settlement with Sean, okay? And he belongs to that agenda. That's why he's so famous. They land all the contracts. It's his attorneys, which are Mark Garagos and Ben Mercedes. A Michigan inmate has been awarded a staggering $100 million in a civil lawsuit against the notorious music mogul Shane Diddy Combs. The judgment, which was handed down yesterday, went in favor of 51-year-old Derek Lee Cardello Smith, who had accused Diddy of drugging and assaulting him during a disturbing incident. In his lawsuit, Smith recounted a chilling encounter in which he claims that Combs added something to his drink without his knowledge. I was sitting there, and I began to feel drowsy, Smith testified. I started to lose consciousness and as I was fading, Sean said to me, I added a little something to it for you. I'll get that from you one way or another. According to Smith, those were the last words he heard before blacking out. When he awoke, Smith claims that Diddy openly admitted to drugging him while he was unconscious. The incident left him shocked and disoriented, and it became the foundation of his lawsuit, which culminated in one of the largest civil awards in recent history. The $100 million verdict represents a significant victory for Smith, who had been incarcerated at the time of the alleged assault. The case has garnered widespread attention, not only for the shocking nature of the accusations, but also for the involvement of one of the music industry's most powerful figures. Diddy, known for his empire in entertainment and business, has yet to publicly respond to the verdict. However, the judgment has sent shockwaves through the industry raising questions about the extent of his involvement and whether more victims may come forward with similar allegations. Smith's victory in the courtroom is being viewed by many as a rare triumph for individuals fighting against influential figures in positions of power. His attorney praised the decision, calling it a message to those who believe they can abuse their status without consequence. This is about holding people accountable, no matter how famous or wealthy they are, the lawyer said. As the dust settles, the ramifications of this case are expected to linger, with many wondering what impact it will have on Diddy's reputation and future endeavors. For Derek Lee Cardella Smith, however, the ruling marks a significant step toward justice, though it cannot erase the trauma he claims to have endured. Diddy and Ross, which they good buddies, okay? Mm -hmm. they, they, they're gay. Who? Both. Diddy and Ross. And Cat. Okay. okay. Um, they do satanic ritual, which is basically CIA mind programming techniques to their own family, kids, uh, etc. in the group. And they bond that way, okay? So they do uh, sexual. Uh, they do uh, animal animals sacrifices and everything in the bohemian grove. What's even more disturbing are the claims Smith made in his lawsuit about Diddy's alleged pattern of spiking drinks and assaulting both men and women at his parties. According to Smith, he was working as a bartender at a Detroit restaurant in 1997 when he received an invite to one of Diddy's parties at a local Holiday Inn. Yo, there's been so much dirt coming out about Diddy lately that it's almost impossible to keep up with all the dark stuff he's allegedly done over the years. If you missed one of the most shocking stories, let me fill you in on what went down with a man named Derek Cardella Smith. Smith won a $100 million judgment against Diddy after accusing him of sexually assaulting him back in the 90s. Cardello Smith hit Diddy with a lawsuit in Michigan. And since Diddy failed to show up for the virtual court hearing, the judge granted a default judgment in favor of Smith. But here's where things get tricky. While the $100 million judgment made headlines, Diddy might not actually have to pay that amount after all. Diddy's attorney convinced the judge to set aside the ruling, arguing that Smith didn't properly serve Diddy with the lawsuit according to Michigan's legal procedures. So for now, the massive payout is on hold. But honestly, the money isn't even the main issue. What we really need to focus on is the disturbing details that Cardello Smith exposed in his lawsuit. He described a method Diddy allegedly used to assault his victims at parties, claiming Diddy would drug them before the assault. Smith also dropped another bombshell, accusing Diddy of paying off police officers to help cover up his crimes. It's a wild and horrifying situation, and from the looks of it, this might just be scratching the surface of what's really been going on. Things are getting even more suspicious because if you remember, a few months ago, another inmate made headlines when a video of his interrogation surfaced. In the video, he talked about working as a sort of ex-slave for Diddy and participating in secret, pre-arranged encounters involving Cassie, along with other celebrities like Rick Ross and DJ Khaled. But that's not even the craziest part this man went on to claim that Diddy is part of something called the Bull or the so-called Black Illuminati, where these rich celebrities allegedly engage in all sorts of depraved activities involving animals and young people. It's as dark and twisted as it sounds. So there's a lot to unpack here, and it really makes you question what's going on behind the scenes. 
The allegations keep piling up, and it seems like this is just the beginning of a much larger scandal. Let's break down the wild situation involving Derek Cardella Smith and how he managed to hit Diddy with a massive lawsuit while still in prison. This is more than just a legal battle, it's full of jaw-dropping twists and shady dealings. Back in August, Cardello Smith pulled a bold move by filing a lawsuit against Diddy, accusing him of sexual assault that allegedly took place in 1997. But before things really blew up, Diddy himself reportedly visited Smith in prison and tried to offer him hush money to keep the allegations quiet. According to Smith, Diddy and his legal team showed up at the prison, offering $2.3 million to settle everything under the radar. This, of course, raised major red flags. Why was Diddy so desperate to keep this out of the spotlight? In his lawsuit, Cardello Smith claims that Diddy spiked his drink and assaulted him during a party back in the 90s, and Diddy's urgency to pay him off makes it clear that these allegations are no small matter. Before this, Smith had already played his cards well. He got a judge to freeze Diddy's real estate assets, stopping the mogul from selling off any of his mansions or properties. This move sent shockwaves through Diddy's camp, and it seemed like he was trying to liquidate his assets to deal with other legal or financial issues on the horizon. According to Smith, the offer from Diddy came in two prison visits, one directly with Diddy and the other with one of Diddy's financial advisors. Diddy allegedly made it clear he had big things going on in his life that required a lot of money and wanted to sell off his properties to deal with those matters. But Smith wasn't having it. He refused the $2.3 million offer, telling Diddy that he wasn't going to let him hide his money and escape responsibility for what he'd allegedly done. Diddy, however, wasn't about to file a formal legal response supposedly telling Smith that he'd rather take his chances with a default judgment. But Smith wasn't done. After turning down the hush money, he went straight to a Michigan judge and requested a restraining order to prevent Diddy from selling off any of his properties. And the judge agreed, granting the order and freezing Diddy's assets to ensure that Smith would have a shot at recovering damages if he won the case. Smith argued that allowing Diddy to sell his properties would harm him financially, as some of those assets were directly tied to investments he had made while he was out of prison. Then came the virtual court hearing on September 9th, where Diddy failed to show up. Since he didn't bother responding to the legal summons, the judge ruled in favor of Cardello Smith by default, hitting Diddy with a $100 million judgment. The legal win for Smith was massive, but the story took another turn when Diddy's lawyers found a loophole. They convinced the judge to set aside the default judgment, claiming that Smith hadn't properly served Diddy according to Michigan law. Still, this legal maneuver didn't change the fact that Diddy's name is now tied to a serious set of allegations. At first, everything seemed normal, a typical flashy Diddy party with booze flowing, music pumping, and celebrities everywhere. Smith said Diddy even came across as surprisingly down to earth, just hanging out and having a good time with his security and a group of women. But things quickly took a dark turn. After having a few drinks, Smith started feeling off and realized his drink had been tampered with. He claimed that Diddy spiked his drink without him knowing, and what followed was a disturbing group encounter involving Diddy and several women. Smith says that at one point, Diddy's attention shifted toward him. Uncomfortable with the situation, Smith tried to distance himself by moving to the couch, but Diddy followed him and offered another drink. It was only after Smith had taken a few sips that Diddy allegedly admitted to spiking the drink, leaning in and telling Smith he had added a little something to it. Diddy then reportedly told Smith that he'd get what he wanted from him one way or another. This lawsuit has set off alarm bells because the allegations bear a disturbing resemblance to other accusations that have surfaced about Diddy in recent years. Several lawsuits have been filed against him, making similar claims of drink spiking and sexual misconduct at his parties. Cardello Smith's refusal to settle and his ability to freeze Diddy's assets have turned this case into something much bigger than anyone expected. With all these allegations coming to light, it's clear that this legal battle is far from over, and it's got everyone wondering what other secrets Diddy might be hiding. The situation surrounding Cardella Smith and Sean Diddy Combs has taken several intense and disturbing turns, bringing to light shocking allegations. Smith initially sought a restraining order, aiming to prevent Diddy from selling off assets to dodge his legal responsibility for the alleged wrongdoings against Smith. But Smith didn't stop there. Without legal representation, he went further and filed for a default judgment against Diddy, claiming that the music mogul ignored the legal summons. Surprisingly, the judge sided with Smith, Diddy's failure to show up for the virtual hearing on September 9th led to a default judgment, leaving him liable for a whopping $100 million. However, the story took another twist when Diddy's legal team found a loophole and convinced the judge to set the judgment aside. Despite this, the damage was already done, Smith's allegations and the revelations in his lawsuit had already sparked significant controversy. In his lawsuit, Smith accused Diddy of spiking drinks and sexually assaulting both men and women for decades. These shocking claims date back to 1997, at one of Diddy's infamous parties. According to Smith's account, he was a bartender at a Detroit restaurant when he was invited to a party at a local Holiday Inn, 
hosted by Diddy. At that time, Diddy was at the peak of his career, and getting an invite to one of his parties was a big deal. The party started as many of Diddy's events did alcohol flowing, music pumping, and celebrities everywhere. Smith recalls having a great time hanging out with Diddy, his security, and several women. Diddy, according to Smith, seemed unusually down to earth, just vibing with everyone like a regular guy. But things took a dark turn quickly. Smith claims that after having a few drinks, something felt off he started to feel disoriented. It wasn't until later that he realized his drink had been spiked. According to his lawsuit, after his drink was tampered with, Smith found himself in a group sexual encounter involving several women and did. The situation escalated from there. According to Smith, Diddy not only admitted to tampering with his drink but made a disturbing remark, stating he would get what he wanted one way or another. After drinking more of the spiked beverage, Smith blacked out. What he claims happened next is chilling when he woke up, he realized that Diddy had sexually assaulted him while he was unconscious. Diddy. What disturbed Smith most was when Diddy's focus shifted from the women to him. Uncomfortable, Smith moved to a couch to distance himself from the situation. But Diddy followed him and offered another drink, which Smith, unaware that his first drink had been spiked, accepted. After taking a few sips, Smith says he started to feel even more drowsy and that's when Diddy allegedly leaned in and confessed to spiking his drink. Horrified and traumatized, Smith left immediately, wanting nothing more to do with Diddy or the party scene he was involved in. Smith says he reported the incident to the police. But at the time, he couldn't bring himself to fully explain what had happened. The trauma was overwhelming and like many survivors of sexual assault, he wasn't ready to face or relive the event. It wasn't until years later, while serving time in prison, that he fully processed what had happened. Through therapy, Smith came to terms with the fact that he had been sexually assaulted. This realization, coupled with the years of pain and silence, led him to finally pursue legal action against Diddy. These allegations are not isolated, they echo claims that have been made against Diddy in other lawsuits filed since November 2023. Smith's detailed account brings to light a disturbing side of one of the entertainment industry's most powerful figures, raising serious questions about how these incidents were kept under wraps for so long. Despite Diddy's legal maneuvers to avoid the $100 million judgment, the accusations have already put him in the spotlight for all the wrong reasons, and Smith's lawsuit has cast a shadow over Diddy's public persona. Things really started to click for Cardello Smith when he began piecing together all the strange events that had happened, but it didn't end there. Smith wasn't just accusing Diddy of the acts themselves, he also claimed that a massive cover-up was involved. According to Smith, Diddy allegedly paid off police officers in Detroit and Monroe to keep the entire situation under wraps. Smith stated that these officers took the money, kept quiet, and ensured the incident never saw the light of day. But now, with Smith's case making headlines, social media erupted, reminding people of a buried story that had a disturbing connection to Diddy. It turns out, a few months ago, some social media detectives dug up an old, bizarre interrogation tape from 2018 featuring a man named Jonathan A. In this tape, Jonathan essentially confirmed many of the things Cassie revealed in her lawsuit against Diddy, a whole five years before she even filed it. To give you some context, back in May 2018, Jonathan got into serious trouble when he broke into Trump National Doral Miami Golf Club in Florida. This led to a wild shootout with the police, during which Jonathan started ranting about all sorts of things, including Donald Trump, Barack Obama, and, of course, Diddy. According to reports from the Miami Herald, Jonathan was fully engaged in a gun battle with police while spouting off about various conspiracy theories. Eventually, he was shot in the legs, rushed to the hospital, and charged with attempted murder of law enforcement officers. But here's where things take a weird turn. There's no public information about what happened to Jonathan after the shootout. No updates on his prison sentence, no reports on where he's being held, and no clear confirmation on whether he's even alive. It's as if he vanished without a trace. Things got even stranger when the Daily Mail reported a shocking twist shortly after Jonathan's arrest. The report revealed that Jonathan wasn't just an ordinary guy, he was previously a performer for a notorious adult website called Dancing Bear. This site featured videos where women performed explicit acts on men dressed in bear costumes. Now, remember how Cassie's lawsuit accused Diddy of forcing her into degrading situations with male sex workers who were made to wear masks? It seems the puzzle pieces were starting to fall into place. But that's not all when Jonathan's interrogation video resurfaced online, things went from bizarre to outright surreal. Some of the stuff Jonathan said during his interrogation seemed outlandish, but there's a theory going around that Diddy may have had him hooked on substances during those freaky sessions, messing with his mental state. In the video, Jonathan claimed that Diddy Rick Ross and DJ Khaled were all involved in the same secretive, questionable lifestyle, even alleging that they were romantically involved. He stated outright, Diddy and Rick Ross are gay, okay? DJ Khaled too. 
Jonathan didn't stop there. He spilled even more tea, claiming that Diddy would sit and record these sexual encounters, just watching as things unfolded. What's more shocking is that this interrogation took place five years before Cassie even filed her lawsuit, yet it received no media attention. The entire incident involving Jonathan and the shootout was buried under other headlines, almost as if it were purposefully ignored. But the story gets even more outlandish. Jonathan went on to claim that these wild parties weren't just about physical acts, they were part of full-blown Illuminati rituals. According to him, these elites, including Diddy, bonded over twisted sexual abuse rituals, mind control, and even blood sacrifices. He even mentioned Bohemian Grove, a secretive gathering rumored to involve powerful people engaging in bizarre, occult-like rituals. For those unfamiliar with Bohemian Grove, it's long been a subject of conspiracy theories with allegations of strange rituals performed by the global elite. Jonathan I made some shocking claims during his interrogation, alleging that at Bohemian Grove, powerful elites participate in satanic rituals which include disturbing acts like animal abuse and blood sacrifices. He even mentioned that CIA mind control techniques were being used on their families, children, 